Are, we, are you ready? Anyway? I'm ready. We're You're ready. ready. Cool. Right. gentlemen welcome along to our latest product focus piece this time as you might be able to tell we are checking out KSAH's latest generation Optum series tractors so Ed before we kind of get into the nitty-gritty of the AFS Connect which obviously as we can see brings with it a whole new layout which is why we're kicking off in the cab because that's where most of the visual differences lie between the old Optum and this new generation Optum just give us a quick overview of the Optum range now number of models horsepower levels so we've got three models. We've got the 250, the 270, and the 300. And the number is indica indicating the rated horsepower. So the 300, rated horsepower of 300, with a max power of 315. So what you see on your bonnet is pretty much what you get. There's no lies with us. So the engine in this, this will still be 6.7 litres? It's a 6.7 NEF engine, um, similar as what we use on the Puma, uh, but a variable geometry turbo. Um, and a different sump, um, allowing us to get more power out of, out of the machine. Also, that sump, it allows us to change the front suspension. So the front suspension is hanging from the rear of the engine and it gives us a little bit more travel and a smoother right. ride. So that's sort of saddle style with saddle suspension. Style, yeah. Got you. And then transmission wise, obviously it's all CVT on the, on the Optums. Yeah, so a four by two CVT transmission. Um, we've got no control over what range we're in. The tractor automatically changes range as it sees fit, as it needs more power um, to optimise the engine horsepower available to us in the field. And in terms of operation of the CVT, it's still pretty much the same as before, pr pr proportional lever control on there? 100%. We were happy with how we were controlling the CVX with the proportional lever. The further you push it forward, the faster you're going to go. Yeah. We're limited by the speed on, on the A-pillar dash here but we can change that using the scroll wheel here and we have three um, theoretical target speeds that we can go between. So that's kind of the main physicalities of it. So, I mean, let's get stuck into this, the new sort of AFS Connect Optum really. I mean, cab-wise structure, is that changed? So the cab is seven and a half time, seven and a half percent bigger. Um, so you'll see that it, we're slightly wider. There's more room behind the seat. Uh, allowing us to sit further back, giving us more room in front. Yeah. Um, and I think you'll agree, it, it's just a lighter environment, um, better visibility from the increased glass area. So the whole front console has been redesigned. Um, the air vents, nice bits of lever on the side, giving it a whole new modern look. Um, and this, yeah, this lighter dash gives it a lighter appearance within, within here. And you notice up here, the A pillar itself, uh, we used to have a, a fairly large A pillar. We've now just gone to the small A pillar display. Uh, we can't do anything with this display. It's just displaying key information. Yeah. So no configurability. But obviously when we get back here, there's a lot of configurability that we can control as the operator wants to. So AFS Connect then, obviously it kicked off with the Magnums and it was introduced on the uh, on the Quadtrax and the Staggers, now on Optum. So what does AFS Connect bring to the party then? So the AFS Connect obviously brings us this new armrest. Um, so it gives us a new level of configurability, but also connectivity. So farmers want to know what's going on in the field. They can monitor from phones. They can monitor on the desktop. They can make informed decisions from the information the tractor is sending back to the farm, farm office. If we start to look at configurability, um, we've got buttons from one to four down here. We've got five to eight, and we've got these buttons here. And there's a multitude of different functions we can put on there, ranging from controlling remote valves, um, controlling diff locks, four wheel drives, anything you can think of on the tractor, we can control on these buttons. So if we look at the, um, the configurable control screens, 
uh, what you can see is I've got my levers here. And at the moment, as you'd expect, we're in the default position where number A or letter A, sorry, is controlling remote valve one. I can um, change any of these. So if we plumb everything up wrongly, we can adapt it. So for example, I want this lever here, this paddle here to control my front remote valve number one. And you'll notice the color changes to correspond with the caps on the hydraulics on the rear. So quite a nice feature how these lights are all changing yeah. to relate to where we plumbed everything in. If I come into um, this drop down box here, we've got the joystick. So the joystick is um, controlling remote valves and we can control seven remote valves on this lever. Just on that one lever? On that one lever. Right. So we've got two axes, or forward and backwards, left and right. And then we've also got a rocker switch on the front. And then everything is doubled up when we use the button on the top. So we get everything with a second function. And then I have got these two configurable buttons here and that gives us our seventh one. So we could control seven remote valves just from this one lever then the multi-function handle so these four buttons here they're dedicated to a remote valve and we can select which one we want it to control the other configurable buttons we've got are the remote fender switches so which remote valve we're going to be controlling from there so at the moment it's going to control number three i want it to control number one so when we're outside i can lift and lower the implement from um, the rear of the machine so that is the configurability the configurable buttons um, they are assigned to each implement or user as well. So we can assign them to the implement. So if we bring the same implement back, we can bring the same layout as we had before. Right, so you can make profiles per implement or per user. So yeah, we can see within here, within the settings, I have got a save configuration and that is my save configuration for the Optum 300 CVX with the Bednar. Next time I bring it on, bring that configuration back and we get header management back, we get the remote valves set up as we had them before, we get um, all the configurable controls back as well. If we want to move um, or adjust our remote valves, for example, there's multiple ways of doing the same, same thing. So I've got this handy one, shortcut straight into remote valves. Right. I've got my hotkey. So this is again a shortcut button. I can press this and I've got a shortcut to many of many things on the remote so valves. The key functions, you the can key go straight functions, to it. Straight in there. So again, you keep stumbling across getting to the same end result. But for um, operators which still like the buttons, we still cater for them. So I can select which remote valve I want to be controlling here or adjusting, sorry. And then I've got this dial here. You can see I can adjust the extend, yeah. retract flow percentages there. Likewise with the hitch, I've still got physical buttons um, to adjust these things as well as um, in, in the screen. So